Hey, it's the Terminion Hero here, and we're playing Ape Escape on the Loose. Let's just get into it before some sort of demo starts or something. It. I've got it! If that does that, then this happens. In other words, that causes this. Therefore, if in fact that happens, then... Eureka! Natalie, the time All machine right, is complete! Already. We've got bigger problems, you know? Spike, can you hear me? Something incredible has happened. As a result of that accident, you have been warped through time. You will soon arrive in the age of the dinosaurs. The bad news, Spike, is that a band of monkeys is also lost in the past in many different lands. If those monkeys are left to their own devices, they will probably end up seriously changing the course of history. Spike, I have a request to make of you. Luckily, you should be in the possession of two gadgets I've invented. I want you to use them to go after as many of those wild apes as you can. You'll be able to capture them with the time net. And should you find yourself in a potentially dangerous situation, use the stun club to defend yourself. It will definitely come in handy. I know you'll be more than up to the huge task ahead. I'm counting on you. So with all that out of the way, so yeah, this is Ape Escape on the Loose, a remake of the original Ape Escape. And in the Ape Escape games, your goal in most levels is to catch a certain amount of monkeys. Here, Cassie is telling us to capture three monkeys out of the four there are total in this stage. 
It also says that there's one specter coin we can collect. So we'll have to look for that. And here we are. Uh, traveling through time to catch all the monkeys. So here we've got some tutorial stuff. Yeah, press the button assigned to the stun club to swing it. Face the direction you want to swing it and hit the button. Knock monkeys out by swinging it and spinning around with it. You can also use it to knock the monkeys over. Press the X button to jump. Swing the stun club around with the analog stick. Good luck. Now it might sound weird to say that it's strange for the jump button to be X, because most games have the jump button as X, but in the old Ape Escape games, R1 was oddly enough the jump button. But there's a reason for that. This game was made to be played with two analog sticks, and it was basically made for the... for the... DualShock PlayStation 1 controller, or whatever. The controller that the PlayStation 2 controller ended up being like. So because of that, this version of the game can control kind of weird. Since the PSP has different controls. I'm here, I'm just trying to get a hang of it. That's a cookie, that's health. You see in the top left corner how much health we have. Uh, this monkey's dropping banana peels. You don't want to slip on those. And here, if we hit a monkey and then use our time net, uh, we can stun the monkey and then catch them. You don't have to stun them first, but it makes them easier. Now these triangles, they are small versions and large versions. And a large triangle here is worth, it looks like, five small ones. And the big ones actually have a number of uses. Also, this was the Spectre coin that we're, we were looking for in the level. We'll get more into what those do later. But these triangles, the power chips, I think they're called. Uh, once you collect a hundred, you get an extra life, just like, you know, coins in Mario. And that's really the only... Uh, the only... Okay. There is one other purpose for the small power chips, and that's because... Uh, there's time trials in this game, and uh, collecting power chips can freeze the timer, and big ones freeze it for longer, but small ones still freeze it. Uh, but there's a, a couple other purposes for the big power chips, which I'll talk more about later. Switch between the gadgets you're holding by using the circle, triangle, and square buttons. Switch to the time net to catch the monkeys. Cast the time net by pressing the assigned button. You can cast the net in any direction by turning the analog stick. Now, there is no right analog stick in this game, which is what you would use for your gadgets in the original version of the game. Also, that monkey up there we can't get yet. Blue mailboxes you actually have to hit to see what they have to say, whereas red ones automatically open the first time you walk next to them. Your health is indicated by the round cookies in the upper left part of your screen. If you've almost run out, watch out! It doesn't look like they tell you that you can't get to that one yet. And there we go. There's the three monkeys in the first level. It's a pretty short and easy first level. I believe that level's called Fossil Field. The time period is called the Lost Land, I'm pretty sure. So that's stage one done. The Lost Land, Fossil Field. And Natalie tells me that I did great, which... I mean, thanks, but 
I might be skipping your cutscene a lot, because she's going to say that every time we finish a level. We will need to get more gadgets before we can get that other monkey, though. And speaking of all that, uh, this is the time station. Welcome to the time station, Spike. Everything here will help you with your mission. You are now in the warp room. Step on the switch in front of the monitor to head to the next level. Other switches let you save data and do other things. Message posts are available, so I know you'll soon figure it all out. So this way it goes to the gadget trainer. Which, one of the downsides of the PSP version of the game is that there's going to be a loading screen between every area, which kind of sucks, but whatever, there's not much we can do about it. This is the training facility. Here you can learn to use the gadgets you have acquired. Come back here for practice if you forget how to use any of the gadgets. So once we get our first unlockable gadget, we'll be able to go here to practice with it. Once we get our second one, we'll be able to go here, and so on. With that star one at the end being the final one. This little area is also nice as a fun little playground where you can learn how to climb around on these poles. Uh, including the ones on the ceiling. So just a good way to get you used to the controls here. It looks like I took damage there, but uh, my cookies didn't appear in the corner of the screen, so I don't think I actually did. And over here, we have the minigame area which is what the Spectre Coins are for. They unlock minigames. And we'll be doing these at the end of the LP. This is the minigame corner. To play a minigame, you first have to gather up Spectre Coins scattered all around the levels. Once you have collected the number of Spectre Coins on the monitor, you will be able to play that minigame. You can check up on how many coins you've collected. Go to the status screen by pressing the start button and then hit the circle button. So yeah, there's 60 specter coins in the game. And the four mini games are unlocked at 10, 20, 30, and 40. I believe it was the exact same in the original game except that there was no mini game for 30. Uh, don't get too excited because... Honestly, the minigames in the PSP version are not that great. So yeah, that is where you select your levels. And over this way is something very important. Step on this switch to save the game or check out information on the monkeys. The other rooms are the training facility and minigame corner. You should try them out between missions. Okay, so in here, there are a number of features. You can save your game, which we're going to do right now. I'm going to save over this one. The file I'm saving over was the file that I was gonna use for this Let's Play, but I recorded that forever ago, and I only got three episodes done, so... I figured, ah, I didn't get that far, I'll just restart. And then we have the monkey book here, which will give you information about all of the monkeys you've caught. I'll be doing a bonus video at the end of the LP. Uh, showing off all these guys. Uh, 
And over here is something new to the PSP version, the enemy book. Now, if you've defeated enough of an enemy, and you've completed the world that we're in, so if we finished all three levels of the Lost Land, and we defeated enough of the two enemies that are in the Lost Land, then the enemy will be added to our enemy book. And I'll, again, I'll be doing a bonus video showing all the enemies here. Now there is one feature that is unfortunately missing, and that's Cassie's data. Now Cassie, who didn't have an official English name until this remake, uh has a bunch of messages, like a bunch of random information she can give you, and that is one of the purposes of the big uh, triangle power chips, is that uh, whenever you get enough of those big power chips, you will get an entry for Cassie's data. It, there's a hundred different pieces of data you can get, and the one you get is always completely random, and you can get repeats, so it can be a bit of a pain to get them all. But, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get any of them on this version of the game, because I think that's only in the PAL version. It might also, I think it's also in the Japanese version too, actually. But... I don't have the PAL version. If I get the PAL version, I'll do a video showing off all of Cassie's data, but for right now, I'm going to have to leave it out. There is one other purpose to the big power chips, but that won't become relevant until after we've beat the game, so I'll avoid talking about that until then. And that is all I'm going to do for this episode. I know the gameplay was kind of slow because I'm not super used to the PSP controls. And we only really did just one really short level. Uh, trust me, the levels do get a lot longer as we go along, so don't worry. I'll also get better as we go along. But... Yeah, that's all we're gonna play in this video. We cleared the Lost Land Fossil Field. We we only cleared it. We did not complete it because we have not captured all of the monkeys yet. There's still that one we can't get. So we'll return here later. But in the next video, we're going to go to Primordial Ooze. I'm the Terminian Hero, and I will see you then.